The 2022 stock market crash has lowered the valuation of many companies, creating ample buying opportunities. Today, I'm going to share three cheap dividend stocks that I think are a good buy heading into 2023. In fact, I just recently purchased more of all these stocks. Each is yielding at least 4% with a strong history of dividend growth. Let's roll the intro. My name is Zach and you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. Throughout this analysis, I will be using my own stock research tool available at DividendData.com. I built this with the goal of providing every financial metric I look for in a company all in one place. This is combined with historical graphs, full data tables, and calculated growth rates. I really would recommend trying it out at DividendData.com. Stock number one is the T. Rowe Price Group, ticker symbol TROW. The current price Price is $109.15 with 223.4 million shares outstanding, giving the company a current market cap of $24.39 billion. From the 2021 high, the price has fallen over 50%. So why is this stock down so much? To understand this, you must understand their business model. Quote, founded in 1937, Baltimore-based T. Rowe Price Group is a global investment organization with $1.34 trillion in and assets under management. The organization provides a broad array of mutual funds, sub-advisory services, and separate account management for individual and institutional investors, retirement plans, and financial intermediaries. The company also offers sophisticated investment planning and guidance tools. The core of T. Rowe Price's business comes from fees on assets under management, so an event like the 2022 stock market crash directly impacts their bottom line. Not only is the value of the assets they own own going down, but people are more likely to sell and be risk-averse investing new capital. You can see this is already reflected in the company's earnings over the last year. This financial correlation to market conditions is an important factor to be aware of when investing in T. Rowe Price. With the stock price already down over 50%, I believe this has created a great long-term buying opportunity. The valuation is quite attractive right now. Based on earnings over the trailing 12 months, the stock is trading at a 12.5 PE rate Ratio. Additionally, the current dividend yield is 4.4%. As of their Q3 report, they have $2.3 billion in cash on hand and negative $2 billion net debt. In 2021, annual free cash flow was at $3.2 billion, and based on the first three quarters of 2022, it seems like they will be around $2.5 billion, so slightly down as expected. On a per share basis, revenue has grown at a 12.16% 10-year compound annual growth rate. However, this does not account for the recent revenue decline in 2022. Net income per share is growing at a 16.22% 10-year compound annual growth rate, once again, not accounting for the 2022 decline. Free cash flow per share is growing at a massive 24.62% 10-year CAGR. T. Rowe's margins are quite high as investment management is a low-cost business. Gross margins are over 60%, with 2021 net margins at 40%. Their balance sheet is stellar, with $8.9 billion in shareholder equity and negative net debt. This is financial discipline. T. Rowe Price is a cash-generating machine that grows with the overall stock market. They use this cash to reward their shareholders with stock buybacks and massive dividends. In the past few years, the company has been buying back between 1% to 3% of their shares outstanding. This increases your relative ownership stake in the company. T. Rowe's dividend is just fantastic. Over the past 10 years, the compound annual growth rate of the dividend is 13.61%. They pay a quarterly dividend that consistently increases on an annual basis. On top of this, they pay large special dividends every few years. For example, in 2021, they paid one $3 per share dividend. Their most recent dividend increase was over 11%. They are due to announce a new dividend increase in the coming month. I'd expect this one to be on the lower end, around 5-10% to based on current market conditions. This dividend is very safe, too, with plenty of room to grow the dividend over time. For example, the 2021 dividend payout ratio was only 55% 
even though they paid a special dividend. With the current base dividend, the 2022 payout ratio will likely be around the 45 to 50% mark. This is accounting for the decrease in earnings, so this dividend is definitely safe. T. Rowe's current annual dividend payout is $4.80. With the stock price at $109, buying T. Rowe stock will give you a 4.4% dividend yield on cost. That is great for the dividend-minded investor. It's rare to find a business at a low valuation, yielding a high rate with a strong balance sheet and reliable long-term growth. This has now become one of my largest positions. I will explain that in a new portfolio update video coming soon. All that said, there are still risks to investing in T. Rowe. Active management and mutual funds have been decreasing in popularity compared to passive investing in ETFs. This is one trend that could hurt the company if they fail to adapt and make a compelling case to new investors. This could lead to continued cash outflows. In the short term, the market could continue going down and cause a decrease in assets under management, lowering their income. However, over the long term, I think T. Rowe Price has massive tailwinds. First off, if the company is able to invest intelligently, then they can benefit from the growth of the overall stock market. As their investments grow, so will their assets under management, thus increasing their earning power and your dividends. This is a cycle that can lead to reliable growth. Stock number two is the Intel Corporation, ticker symbol INTC. The current stock price is $26.73 with 4.12 billion shares outstanding, giving the company a market cap of $110 billion. From Intel's 2021 high, the company has fallen over 60% in value. These prices have not been seen since at least 2015. Now, maybe a great long-term buying opportunity for Intel. However, this semiconductor giant is facing a world of financial pain. The chip shortage is long gone and some markets are facing an oversupply. This is occurring most notably in personal computing, which is a core section of Intel's business. Add on top of that a recessionary environment and boom, Intel is having the worst earnings in nearly a decade. On top of this, they are spending massive amounts of money on new chip fabrication plants to expand for the future and build out their foundry business model. Capital expenditures have more than doubled year over year to over $7 billion a quarter. This combination has made Intel post over negative $6 billion in free cash flow for both 2022 Q2 and Q3. That is really bad. However, it's possible that these are short-term problems. As all companies do, Intel will balance their production to meet market supply and demand. This will improve their short-term earnings. Also, the long-term growth of semiconductor will be an industry-wide tailwind. The massive spending on new fabrication plants are investments to increase their future earning power, albeit Intel will take many years to see any real return. This expansion plan is aggressive and was made from a position of financial strength. In 2020 and 2021, Intel's financial performance was stellar. The company generated $20 billion and $10 billion in free cash flow, respectively. For context, Intel's annual dividend payment is around $5.6 billion. At these earnings, the dividend was so secure with the payout ratio between 25 to 50%. Intel had ample cash on hand of $28 billion with $9.8 billion of net debt. Their balance sheet is still strong as of the latest quarter, but it's trending worse. The obvious observation here is that Intel needs to stop burning money before the stock will recover. If they continue with large negative free cash flows, this will not only keep the stock price low, but put the dividend payment at risk. Intel has already stopped share repurchases to help fund this massive expansion. On their latest earnings call, their CEO confirmed that the dividend is safe. However, that may change if the company continues burning money. Intel's large cash position will be able to sustain the dividend for quite some time, especially if they can increase earnings from this recent decline. This strategy of using the balance sheet to sustain dividend payments is seen in cyclical businesses like oil giants Exxon and Chevron. A similar strategy could be applied here. If true, the current $1.46 annual dividend offers a 5.46% dividend yield on cost. Intel has a history of consistent dividend increases. Over the past 10 years, the compound annual growth rate of the dividend is 4.94%. Their most recent dividend increase was 4.89%. This was coming into a year where they already suspended their share repurchases. This was coming into a year where they already suspended their share repurchases, knowing they plan to spend massive 
massive amounts, a positive signal of management that they care about the dividend. Based on historical trends, Intel is expected to announce another dividend increase at the end of January. This will be a huge sign of whether the company is committed to their dividend and increasing it over the long term. If so, I will be far more confident in my Intel investment. Right now, Intel is trading at its highest dividend yield in over a decade. This could end up being a great buying opportunity. The valuation has already come down to such a degree that much of the risk is decreased. Intel is currently trading at 5.2 times their peak 2020 free cash flow. If Intel can return to these levels in the coming years, then the stock is such a great value at current prices. The interesting thing is that the bull case could lead to long-term growth beyond that point. If realized, the bull case for Intel could lead to massive returns. I outlined this in a full stock review video I made in early 2022. That said, there is no rush to buy Intel stock. As of right now, there is no evidence of earnings improving dramatically. Spending is to remain high and could even increase. Additionally, it will take many years for them to see a return on investment from their new fabs. This will likely keep Intel's stock price down. However, not all is bad. The CHIPS Act will help the company fund their domestic manufacturing expansion. Additional support may come over the coming decade. Additionally, Intel's plan to manufacture chips for third parties similar to TSMC is a great strategic business decision. This is a stock where it will take a long time for the story to play out. Stock number three is the Altria Group, ticker symbol MO. The current stock price is $45.52 with 1.79 billion shares outstanding, giving it a market cap of $81.58 billion. This stock is down about 7% year over year. Altria is a cash flow machine. Machine. In 2021, they generate $8.2 billion in free cash flow, paying out $6.4 billion in dividends. In the first three quarters of 2022, Altria is on pace to exceed that free cash flow. The forward-looking annual dividend is $3.76, and the dividend yield at the current price is 8.26%. That is incredibly high, but sustainable based on their free cash flow. Over the past five years, the compound annual growth rate of the dividend is 8%. This is lower in recent years with the latest latest dividend increase being 4.44%. Altria is a dividend growth machine with a high yield. I would also say it's lower risk, especially compared to a company like Intel. I own Altria stock and have been buying more lately. If you want to learn more, I just made a video going into detail about the company and showing how the stock can have a massive dividend snowball effect. I own all three of the stocks mentioned in this video, and I think they are a good buy heading into 2023. That said, this is just my opinion, and you should make sure to do your own research before making any investment decisions. If you want to try out my stock research tools, then check out my website DividendData.com. Your support is appreciated and the website will keep improving over time. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to Dividend Data on YouTube and leave a like. Thanks for watching.